Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the World Over Live. After a nearly 200 year absence, Chant has returned to a small but historic monastery in the Umbrian hills of Italy. A group of Benedictine monks founded a community in the town of Norcia, the birthplace of St. Benedict. They did so in 1998. Once again, sung prayers filled the Basilica of St. Benedict. Now the monks, along with De Montfort Music, are allowing the world to enter their monastery. They've released a new CD called Benedicta, Marian Chant from Norcia. I sat down earlier this week with the prior and founder of the monks of Norcia, Father Cassian Folsom, to talk about the new CD, the importance of chant, and what it has meant to him personally. Father, tell me about the founding of this Benedictine community in 1998. Well, I asked permission of my abbot in 1995. Oh. Um, he was newly elected, and I thought for sure he would say no, and much to my surprise, he said yes, but it took three years for it actually to happen, and all sorts of obstacles and um, so obviously it was the will of God, otherwise it wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Where were you before that? You were, in a, you were in a community and you had a music background. I do, uh, of sorts. Mm -hmm. Which is my first year of college, I studied voice at Indiana University, mm -hmm. at the music school there. But I transferred to the seminary in my second year, so <laughs> it wasn't a very long uh, training. Well, it's a prestigious school Isn't though. Oh yeah. 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 And what of that did you take with you into your monastic life? Well, the music background, certainly, because uh, in the seminary, I was always a cantor. In the monastery, I've been choir master in, at my home monastery of St. Meinrad. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, in founding the new community, I was the choir master for many years until a, a young monk could come along to take over the... I was always a cantor. Uh, and, and how did you end up at Norcia, of all places? Well, yes, it's the birthplace of St. Benedict, so right. it's important. And there hadn't been a monastery there for almost 200 years. Uh, that was divine providence too. We started in Rome, and the intention was to remain in Rome, this ah. new monastery. Uh, but in the year 2000, the abbot primate uh, had a heart attack and resigned, and he was the one who, who helped found us. And so um, we were open for new uh, possibilities, mm -hmm. and the Archbishop of Spoleto Norcia uh, requested that we transfer to, to Norcia. Huh. And of course, there are many ups and downs in that process, yeah, too. Sure. But we, we finally, finally made it there at the end of the Jubilee year. Wow. And that, the, the Basilica of St. Benedict there, a chant has been heard in those walls for, for, for really hundreds a, and hundreds of years. A thousand years, at uh, least. Conservatively. Yes. What is it like to have been the founding member that really restored and brought this worship of God back to the monastery there? Well, for many years, we, because the community was very small, mm -hmm. we arrived in Orchard with three people, now we're 18, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but we prayed in the crypt of the church, mm -hmm. which is actually the birthplace mm -hmm. of St. Mm -hmm. And you could, perhaps it's silly to say so, but you could feel the, the, that those walls had been impregnated with prayer for centuries and centuries. Wow. But now, because we're too big, we've moved upstairs to the, to the main church. Mm -hmm. Is that where you all recorded Benedicta? Yes. yes, and the acoustics are splendid. So yeah. if it sounds good, it's hopefully because the monks sing well, but also because the acoustics. I was telling you before we started, I have a lot of chant in my collection at home. Many of them sound overproduced, almost like performances. This is something other. Why do you think it has a distinctive sound and a, a quality that people can't quite put their finger on, but they're drawn to it, no matter who they are, Catholic or otherwise? Well, maybe for a couple of reasons. The monks believe what they're singing. Mm -hmm. So that, that's communicated. Mm -hmm. um, and they're young. Yeah. 
and you can hear that in the voices too. Mm -hmm. My voice by now is old and tired, but we have young people <laughs> who, who have beautiful color in their voices, and mm -hmm. a couple of the monks have lots of musical background even before they came to the monastery, really? so that helps too. Yeah, and you can hear that. You yeah. can, now, you all are known, if you're known for anything so far, for your beer. I'm which, glad we're known for that. That's you great. are, the, and you've got this microbrewery that has become legendary. Um, I know people here in the United States who make trips over to buy it. What is it about that beer? Who started this, and is that part of your ministry, your mission? The beer is in the Trappist Belgian tradition. Mm -hmm. So we learned from the Trappist monks uh -huh. in Belgium, and they have century-old uh, tradition of beer making. Um, we were looking for a. In, uh, a work that the community could do that would be income producing. So the or original idea was we need to make a living. Right. Uh, but it has proved to be much more than that because beer, good beer especially, uh, is a bridge between the monks and the rest of the world. So even if people have no faith, mm -hmm. if they like beer, yeah. then there's something that brings them to the monastery and then we can start a conversation and pretty soon they're talking about more serious things. Mm -hmm. And that has happened over and over and over again. So they come for the beer but they stay for the mass and the chant yeah. and the rest yes. of it. Absolutely. Hmm. It's a real, it's a tool of evangelization. What's the connection between the beer and the approach and appeal of that and this new CD in your mind? Is there a connection? Well, they're both initiatives that the monks have made that are somewhat out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Um, it shows a certain, um, that we're willing to take risks mm -hmm. and we're willing to do new things right. and there's lots of energy and activity and this mm -hmm. is, they're both expressions of that. Yeah. Who chose this particular uh, selection of music? These are Marian songs, these are antiphons and uh, prayers and this is something you do eight times a day we should say. This is not something you just did because the producers came into town. Right. Uh, in fact, I. I I heard from one of your producers, you all would record and then you'd just keep going because it was well, that time. time for prayer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, actually, the selections were made by two of the monks who have musical background. Mm -hmm. That is the present choir master, Father Basil, mm -hmm. and the previous choir master, Brother Ignatius. Mm -hmm. uh, and they studied, they did research on the, uh, the history of these particular chant pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, Father Basil chose them with a view to highlighting different. Uh, moments in the life of Mary. So mm -hmm. it's organized uh, in a kind of chronological way, mm -hmm. starting from the Immaculate Conception to the, to the uh, uh, crowning of Mary as Queen of Heaven. It did not escape my ear or eye that uh, you, you all say the extraordinary form of the Mass, the old rite. You hear this beautiful Latin sung on the CD. Is there a message here as well about sacrality and the connection to these long-held traditions and the importance of maintaining them. Yes, the old rite or the, the liturgical tradition of the church mm -hmm. for us is a patrimony, not a museum piece, mm -hmm. but something that's alive. Mm -hmm. And it draws young people. Um, and because of the, the sacrality, that is, it's about God, it's not about us, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and that's powerful, and that draws people. And they're drawn to what, do you think? You know, many, many people will say, and you read this all the time, oh, you've got that Baroque language and all those old vestments and the bells, and it goes on and on. That's such, that's a repellent to young, the young people. They, no, they do not want to see that. Come and see. Check it out. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not repellent to young people. Mm -hmm. Well, your monastery is overflowing with young guys. What's yeah. the average age, 33? 33, 33. Hmm. in fact. I'm the, old, well, I'm the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have listened very closely over the last few days to the whole CD repeatedly. You are featured on a number at the beginning of some of these chants um, in solos. I, I was part of the, the hoi polloi, that is <laughs> the, the, the whole community in singing, but it's, it's, very, it's a great thing for me to pass on that role of, of solo singing to the to the younger monks.
Was, was this something important for you to do, to have it memorialized, to have it there? We don't think about memorializing ourselves, really. It's just an expression of what we do that we wanted to share with our mm -hmm. friends. But it's heartfelt. I mean, there's something different here. It, and, and I think you hit upon it. This is the prayer that you all naturally do. This isn't a faked performance right. or something right. choreographed. And you all understand what you're singing, and that really comes through to the listener, I That's think. That's great. That's really great. Particularly your solo at the beginning. I think it's the second or third track. It's early on in the, on, in the recording. You don't know where it is. I do. <laughs> and um, it, th there is something urgent there. Um, I know you've been struggling recently with cancer. Has that changed the way you pray? Well, I. Um that's a good question. I've, I've had uh, cancer twice, hmm. and thanks be to God, it's in remission. Say the dragon is sleeping, but it's a chronic hmm. disease. It can come hmm. back anytime. Hmm. It changes the way I look at the world, certainly. Sure. Um, I think more of the last things than I thought before. Hmm. Um, and much of our liturgical music is about the last things, you know. Right. Um, so it gives you a perspective of, of divine realities that that perhaps uh, you need suffering in order to uh, understand those things. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those who are struggling? Some find such solace in this music, have found such peace in it. Is it a restorative for you as well? Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I would put it in a more general sense, not just this CD, but in the Old Testament, you remember that Saul had these fits of madness from time to time. Right. And when he did so, David would play the harp for him, and he would calm down. Hmm. Well, if I go into Vespers, for example, kind of agitated and preoccupied lots of, about hmm. lots of things, hmm. by the time Vespers is over, with the waves of psalmody, then I finally calm down. Uh, and so it brings peace. Uh, Certainly, I experience that uh, mm -hmm. practically every day. You, you've said that this is like breathing and that there's so much pollution in the world and that this is almost a, a curative. Um, I, I've often thought when I've heard uh, communities pray, in prayer, there is a vibration, a physical vibration well, that's true. that it that's gives true. off. I think evil has a vibration as well. It's true. Do you see this as a, um, a needed, a needed presence in the world, physically as well as otherwise. We are desperately needy of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I think monasteries can provide little oases of, uh, of good sense and faith and beauty mm -hmm. in a world that's gone mad. Mm -hmm. What do you hope will be the reaction in the listener, no matter who picks this up? Well, I think they would they would perceive the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. And beauty is a wonderful uh, way of, of, uh, of bringing lure. people to God. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing, the beauty and the peace of it. It's something peaceful. It's, it's, uh, um, it, can, it can settle their, their agitated souls. Uh, mm -hmm. So if, if beauty and peace can be the results, that's really wonderful. Benedicta, Marian chant from Norsha by the Benedictine monks of Norsha is available now at music outlets everywhere. They are number one on iTunes classical chart. Go to demontfortmusic.com for more information. And if you click on the link to the Monks of Norsha website, you can purchase a copy there and help support the monks in their work. Mm -hmm.